Hello, you're watching Ellie from Elementary Paper Crafting. I'm an independent stamping up demonstrator here in the UK. So tonight I'm bringing you a little project using watercolour shapes and Forever Fern. And this comes from a video I watched the other night, which was by Esther from Stamping Star Creations, who's my upline. And she used the watercolour stamps, sorry, the watercolour shapes to create a card which um, gave the effect of some succulents growing on a brick wall. And it was really, really effective. And I thought I would try something similar along the same lines, but just a little bit different. So my idea was to choose um, the different uh, different sized rectangles and squares and create a kind of patio theme with some leaves scattered across it. So with the large rectangle I've used um, here and I've used crumb cake. I wanted the lighter colour for the larger slab so my patio is made up of all different shaped slabs, different shapes and sizes. So I've taken a piece of van very vanilla, which is half the size of a, well, we call it A4 in Britain. It's whatever card size you use. Just cut it in half because I'm going to create um, a larger style card. So actually, I've decided to go with pale papaya and the larger square stamp here. So I load it up with the colour and... Have a little think about where I'm going to stamp this next because, uh, as I say, it's a bit um, tricky. I'm going to go for the corner there. And when I lift this up, you'll see that, um, you know, it doesn't stamp evenly across. But that's the whole idea about this stamp set. It's not blocks. It's, um, um, how can I put it? It's like a distress look. And, you know, when you look at paving slabs, they are like that. So I thought this was perfect. So... Now this is kind of, uh, it's sort of random stamping, but you do have to be a little bit um, precise because you've got to think about how the slate, how the slabs are on the, on the patio, how far they are apart. So I've taken grey granite and the smallest square stamp and I'm just thinking about where I'm going to put that and I've decided just to pop it there right in the centre of that square slab. And now I'm you're going to use Sahara sand on one of the rectangular shapes to slot in between the larger and the smaller stamps there. So I'm getting this, you know, uneven paving look. Now I'm using the, the large stamp again, but I'm only going to stamp part of it just to fill in that edge there. And there you go. So drop my stamp there. That was lucky it didn't fall on my work. And just pop that in that little gap there. So just to save some time, I've, um, by the magic of camera, I've come in and I've got a piece that I've already stamped to save some time. Now I decided that that pale papaya was a little bit um, too light really. Um, so I've just come in with the Smoky Slate classic stamp pad and a blending brush. And I'm just going very lightly over the, mostly the pale papaya but I don't mind if it just goes on to the other slabs it's fine because when you look at your patio it's it does dull in time um, you know some parts of it are not as clean as others etc and so I thought I'm just going to go over it with this just to give it a more lifelike feel really so I've um, just taken a little bit of this video out so that you didn't have to watch me colour the whole thing because obviously it does take some time so I'm feeling quite happy with this so once I've gone all over as much as I wanted to I've then um, decided that I'm going to put this onto sorry I'm going to add now my stamped leaves so these are the particular images I'm using and the greeting there love and laughter forever after so the colors I've chosen for this are going to be cinnamon so cider cinnamon cider and when i stamp these leaves i'm stamp stamping these quite randomly and i want the effect that they're just falling over the edges so i'm not going to stamp them in the middle because that's where i'm popping my greeting 
So I'm just coming in and, I'm just and coming at the beginning, I'm not really quite sure how many just I'm going to need. So I'm just coming in at different these. angles around the card, spacing them at a good distance so that I've got plenty of room for my okay. other leaf stamps. So I've decided that I'm going with four for now. I can always come in and put some more in if I need to. Um, so the next stamp I'm going to use is this one, which I think looks a bit like eucalyptus. And I'm using Blackberry Bliss, which is one of my favourite colours. So now I'm just popping this stamp in between the previous leaves I've stamped, just to give a good look. Now I gave that a really good stamping because I did, did want the Blackberry Bliss to come out quite dark. So I made sure that I really inked that up. And I've gone into the gaps there. Again, I'm just coming in from the edge. I want this to look like the leaves have just fallen anyhow onto the patio. The next colour I'm using is one of our new ink colours. It's Evergreen, Evening Evergreen. I've done a nice stamp of a leaf on the lid of that one. <laughs> so I'm just coming in with my final leaf shape, which um, is actually one of my favourite stamps from this set, actually. And I'm just going to put this in. I chose Forever Green because, sorry, if, oh, I keep getting muddled up the stamp set. Evening Evergreen because it's a really nice, rich, dark green. And I wanted something to really pop here. So this is where I can really decide how much I want this filled in. And so I'm coming in again, just going in the gaps. And I'm having a good look, seeing well, where else would I like a leaf. And I've come further into the middle of the card there. So I'm thinking now that that's probably enough because I do need to leave room for my sentiment in the centre of the card. So I've decided now that I want to add a little bit more to this card. It needs a bit more than the leaves. So I've brought in the um, little sort of random dots that come from the Forever Fern. It's that one there. So I'm just popping that on my smallest block. And this one I'm just popping wherever I think it would look good. So literally just here and there. And... I think it just finishes it off, gives it that extra little something, something without being overpowering. And that's all I really need. Just those few little additions there. And that's fine. So the card base I'm using, I'm going to book, mount this onto what's, it's called a book fold card now. Um, I never actually knew this, but I've taken Places two pieces of Blackberry Bliss card, which measure um, eight and a quarter by yeah. five and three quarters. I've scored an edge of one inch border there, and then I'm just going to fold and burnish that. Um, now I've cut my... No, I haven't cut that yet, actually. Sorry, I'm voice over this after I've made the film. So I'm now going to stick those Take two together. So I'm just going to use our Tombow multi-purpose glue, and which I always put into the fine tip applicator bottle because I find it easier to use. I don't want to add too much glue. Fine tip so I don't want it oozing out from the sides. Now to make sure I get this perfectly square, I turn it up and I tap it onto my desktop to make sure that that end is perfectly straight over it with two over it with my bone folder just to make sure it's stuck down really nicely and then I come back make sure that's folded nicely and then I take my piece of stamped patio with the leaves on <laughs> and I'm going to cut that down now to fit onto the front leaving an eighth of an inch border all the way around so I need to cut this down to seven width ways because if you remember my card was eight and a quarter to begin with. I scored an inch, that will make it seven and a quarter. So if I want an eighth of an inch border, I need to make this down to seven in width. And then I just need it to be five and a half because my cardstock is five and three quarters. And again, I want that 
eighth of an inch border. So I'm just trimming off a little bit from each edge. I've looked and sort of thought where I want my leaves to fall. I've chosen the side I wanted to portray. And I'm just cutting off that final little slither at the end there so that my piece of card will fit perfectly. And as you see, I pop it in there with that one eighth border all the way around. So it looks very pleasing to the eye. Now I've collected up um, a few accessories to use. Um, I've got the. So I'm going to use that stamp, love and laughter. Greeting there, after. love and laughter forever after. With the and I'm going on with my blackberry bliss stamp pad because I wanted it to be quite bold I'm in the middle of this card. So just inking that up. This and I'm placing it down on a straight line there to make sure I get it all straight and then coming in with that stamp. Now after I looked at it, it it didn't really show up very well on my card stop. It was really lost in amongst everything else. So I've looked at it for a while and I've thought mm, I'm not liking this. Is uh, you know it just doesn't do, so I've got myself a small piece of van uh, very vanilla from my scrap pile, and I'm just stamping it again onto that, and you'll see that that looks much better. It really pops with that very vanilla. So I've just um, taken my trimmer and just trimmed this down to size. Um, I didn't want anything extra. I just wanted it to cut exactly around that sentiment so I've not measured this really I'm just going by eye and just coming down making sure it's dead straight there before I go for the cut and that's it much happier with that now it's going to stand out on the card really well that's it really like that so now I'm going to, I decided to put this up on some dimensionals to make it really stand up from the card. So I'm just popping those on there now. And then you need to just take the release paper from the back of the dimensionals, um, which is a little bit tricky, but I find with my tweezers, I can manage it. So after I'd taken the backing off, I then realised that uh, it would be easier if I stuck my card down onto the card first before I put the dimensionals on. Now on the back of this you will see uh, this is my first lot of stamping and I just purely took all of my stamps and started stamping them up just to work out how to do the spacing. So this was my practice but it's just to show I didn't waste the card that's the card I used because when you turned it over you couldn't see those stamping those stamped images on the other side. So I placed that on and got my nice border there. takes a little while just take your time over this just to make sure you've got it perfectly placed and with that wet glue you've got a bit of time to reposition it if necessary so on goes my sentiment now which I'm much much more pleased with when it's on that piece of very vanilla now I've added some twine here now this is stamping up twine but sadly it has been discontinued um, but I didn't have any other twine that would match perfectly with this so I've gone ahead and used it but it shows you that even after things are retired, um, stamping up designs, you know, are so versatile that you can usually use your retired goods with the current ones. They always fit in well. Um, so I'm just winding it round and I'm trying to decide how many times to go round. And I've stuck with going round three times. So just trimming this off. And I always have a spare pair of scissors or a pair of scissors that I only use to cut ribbon and twine so that um, they don't get ruined because if you try and use well used paper scissors to cut ribbon or twine you sometimes find it it doesn't work so I don't want to go with a bow here I feel it's um not really a pretty pretty card so I've just tied a knot I think that's sufficient for this card and I've brought in these, um, these are the leaves trinkets. Again, it's this is a retired product and it came with the Nature's Poem suite. Um, and I'm uh, sad that that's retired actually, because I really like that. So I'm just using some glue dots here to secure this. I'm using two glue dots and 
They're a little bit tricky, but I find if I press firmly down onto them and then just rip them off quickly, it works. Now I'm just thinking about moving this knot up a little bit and it's not uh, it's not plain ball. <laughs> but anyway, um, I shift this about. I can't decide where I'm going to put the leaf. And so I have um, what we call an audition. Um, so you just place it in several different places before you actually stick it down and you think about where it might look best. Now I've decided to move my twine right over to the hinge there and then position my cluster of three leaves towards the bottom and I think that sits really nicely there. And forever so that's my finished card using the forever fern and the watercolour shapes. I hope you've enjoyed hope this. you've really enjoyed my and, video um, I hope it um, comes there's out my well. shop at the top there um, that's the link if so if there's anything video, I can help up, you with click the like button, please go and look at my shop share thank you for watching friends. and please you. click the like button